Greetings shipmates and welcome to another episode of Let's Make Mistakes. Today we are going to be looking at the newly released Japanese heavy cruiser, the Azuma. Now, there's probably quite a lot to go through here, but the important things to start with is, is what kind of style of driving this boat is actually going to need. Now this was my very very first game in the Azuma. I've had a few others since and I can safely say that this is probably the best style to play that fits the boat and going with what everybody else seems to be doing with the ship as well that seems to be the correct assessment as well she is a long range HE spammer she's got very very weak armor 25 millimeters all round meaning she's going to get punished by just about everything and every single battleship out there is going to overmatch her anything with 380 millimeter guns is going to go through it like paper uh, the whole bow is 25 millimeters as well so you're going to get citadel through the nose and you're going to be very very susceptible for any of the other he spamming cruisers out there as well like the worcester which is pretty useful because we're in a game with a worcester as well now as i said this was my first game in the ship so um we were pushing forwards trying to be reasonably careful and um, we're going to get ourselves bitten pretty early so we're going to learn an important lesson about what not to do in the Izuma very very early in this game and then adapt quite quickly to compensate for it uh, I am in division here with my uh, clan mate who is sailing alongside me in the other 1 million free XP cruiser US cruiser the Alaska that is Urban Slayer now we were pushing down here we did notice that the Azuma has excellent concealment down to 11.9 kilometers and as we had no DDs the plan was to go and push this cap and try and get ourselves in here now I've already noticed a problem here and it's written in the middle there detected six yeah don't like that need to get out of here quick now I could have carried on pushing in but I'd have probably been um, obl obliterated immediately so I decided to just turn the boat and get out of here quickly that was it was a bit of a risk it was a big gamble showing such a large ship to a couple of rather large battleships over there but we managed to uh, escape with half of our health left intact which is okay I say it's okay because we do actually have these um there's five hills on board we've just gone through the first one now and they do reload pretty quickly and the one to pay attention is that Worcester over there who obviously knowing how much of fire and uh, destruction that Worcester's going to rain down I want to be out of his gun ranges quickly otherwise he's just going to burn me to the ground now as I was just saying about the hills they do like, reload pretty quickly which is quite useful because you're going to get through them quite quickly as well now as what normally happens with this island everyone blobs up behind here but I want to get behind this island and, and afford myself a level of cover I've already got the HE in the pipe because that's what we just started spitting out at those uh, nose on battleships and uh, that's what we're going to continue to spit out for a fair amount of this game because she is a particularly good fire starter at the AP it does hit hard uh, the guns are pretty accurate but getting uh, getting the AP penetrations from um, those bow on ships is a problem so we do fire quite a lot of HE over the course of the game uh, with regards to the actual game itself we still don't have C, we're nowhere near getting C and this Azuma out on our flank is causing us trouble because we can't just sit here and park behind that island now because she's just going to keep us spotted every time we fire and now that I've put my plane up I'm being detected every time I fire which is a bit of a pain with a Montana and the Lion that's just appeared down there we know there's a Bismarck, we know there's a Worcester as well so we're just going to keep the boat moving and uh, We'll just keep firing and see what we can pick up with the range and distance. As we can see from at the top though, my damage counter is still ticking. That second fire that we put down was uh, going for a little while on the Bismarck. So we've taken a bit off of him. We do still have the um, range, um, range fighter up. So we are increasing our fire range out to 22.9 from, I think it's 19 as standard or 18.9. Correct me if I'm wrong. We'll, we'll check when the fighting goes down. But those are your options. Uh, you don't have a lot of choice with regards to your module, um, your up, um, what do you want to call them? Your consumables on the ship, should we say? You can have a repair for your second slot where I've got AA slotted at the moment. The choice is there or hydroacoustics. And then you have your spotting aircraft and you have your heel. There are no other choices for those two slots. The only one you can change is the AA. 
Now looking at the nature of the ship and the layout of the ship, hydroacoustics I didn't think was going to be as valuable because if I've got myself close enough to be spotted by someone that's firing torpedoes I'm probably have died a long way away, a long time before we even got there. So I didn't bother, we went with AA, we thought we'd give that a go to begin with. And here we are in a game with a CV. With the current meta though, the AA does make sense to keep it. So there we go, that's what's on board. And the game itself, I'm going to try and keep this boat moving as much as possible because we can see she takes a fair bit of damage, but as we can also see as I'm firing back, the guns are pretty accurate on her, and they are very, very good, very, very good cannons. So they'll just keep spitting the HE out. We'll keep getting fires throughout this game. 310 millimeters. They also do a lot of damage when they hit, even with the HE volleys as well. If we can focus back in here, we should see these ones trailing in on the Montana. Hopefully we'll get a decent hit. And that's 7k off the front three guns. That one didn't afford us another fire, but we did get four penetrations on a reverse in Montana who is angled as well. So they're good guns, but as I alluded to at the start of the game, the arm was weak as piss. Now we see I have made an error here already. I've got myself back into range of that Worcester. So straight away we're going to put the hammer down again. And get her moving now she does have a reasonably quick rudder shift as well so she is quite maneuverable for her size and when you put her on the same comparable level so she's kind of matching up with uh, the Kronstad or the Alaska as well so she's a big big boat and uh, you can understand why she's in the game because they kind of need that battle cruiser-esque thing on the Japanese line as well and this is what they're given us although I don't think she's going to be everybody's cup of tea she don't, I don't like, it's not my kind of play style, but it, like all ships, the more you play it, you're going to adapt. And some people, are, I think, are probably going to love her and others just aren't. But pushing into big battleships like that or giving any opportunity to fire on this thing is always going to be punishable. And it's going to be punishable with your large health pool. And that's probably why she's got a large health pool. You can regenerate a fair amount of it which is pretty useful because you're going to lose quite a lot of it pretty damn often as well. The game itself, I mean, she's, we can see we've gone through a fair amount of damage. We're only seven minutes into the game. We're up to 87,000 damage. Uh, that's going to keep ticking over nicely while there's ships over here on this side of the flank. And we've got me and we've got Urban Slayer tucked into the island in the Alaska over there and uh, a couple of battleships over here as well. So there's plenty of do to try and get this cap taken care of and under control uh, that Bismarck over there really really wants the cap but yeah, I mean, he's put himself into a bit of a silly position there isn't he he's gone right in so hopefully we're going to get rid of him shortly and in the meantime I'm just reversing back here I've got AP in the pipe good opportunity here to see what this is going to do to the bow of the Montana who is now coming in towards the Charlie cap did we get anything off of that no, we got a non pen and four ricochets. So back to the HE we go. Because that's been pretty reliable so far. I mean, we've taken a lot of health off this Montana. And by the end of this game, we'll have taken a significant amount of health off of this Montana as well. And we got two pens and some non pens there. We managed to farm a little bit of damage. No fire on that volley. Maybe we'll get lucky on the next one. She's already on fire on the bow. So that's going to be difficult to get another one there. We need to go over the back of the ship. Now that Worcester is he's playing so well with this game. Every time I swung the guns around to try and get a line on him, he disappeared. And as we can see again, there was fire coming in towards me because I've got myself back into range again uh, inadvertently. But when this audacious is flying in our general direction, uh, it's getting me spotted again. And as you can see, I'm eating a lot of damage from distance. So we need to move off of that pretty quickly as well. Uh, the AA was firing, so we did get rid of the planes. And then we should go undetected and go dark again. We've put another repair in to heal back some more of our hemorrhaged health. Our friend in the Montana over there has put the latest fire out he had on him. So we'll try and give him another one as well now. Shells are out on the way. The groupings are good. The guns are good on this boat. I would say credit, credit where credit is due. She does have pretty accurate guns. She's just very, 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 very flimsy. Now, fortunately for me, because the Kerr first pushing into Charlie, I pushed away from the cap a bit. 
because I want to maintain, I want to be playing this boat pretty much at max range all the time. I don't want to get closer than where I am. Any chance you get to um, keep the distance, you've got a better chance of dodging any shells coming in at the moment because we're not being targeted. We're reasonably safe. And now we've got undetected again, we can manoeuvre. I get the feeling playing more of this ship and from other games that I did afterwards because she's got good manoeuvrability you should always be at speed in her because uh, that's going to be your strength in avoiding the incoming shells because when they hit they hit hard now our friend in the Montana over there he's uh he is still ticking is he on the damage board 131 485 no he's stopped ticking for now but he's not going to be with us for much longer so I'm going to focus my attention on the Azuma, and as we speak, the Iowa has taken care of the Montana. So they are now down two of the battleships on this side of the map. We do have this Azuma pushing in, he needs to be dealt with. Uh, Urban Slayer is also targeting him as well. Obviously because we're doing the commentary after the game, you don't listen to me and Urban Slayer cursing our way through the game either. But um, between the pair of us... We were targeting the Azuma because he's, he's stopping us from making this push happen because of the proximity of that Worcester who's still holding that position in by that island at the moment. And that's stopping any attempt to push because the radar's available. If anyone goes in there, radar's going to light that one up and then the CV's probably likely to follow in shortly afterwards as well. You notice I had a little change up to AP again as the Azuma was turning broadside to make his turn away. And um, uh, we got three ricochets off of the back there. Disappointing, but you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So again, we led on the front with that volley there. Drops out of the camera view, just a bit of situational awareness, see how much trouble we're getting ourselves into. And it appears we've managed to miss. Now he will pop up again and we will, we will deal with him eventually. And um, then we'll be able to push through. So the eye was decided now that now's the time to go in for Charlie. A little bit premature. The Worcester see that? He's popped up again and just have started swinging these big old guns around. He disappears. But he's so tight into that island, I can't really get a good volley out on him. And again, as, as every time you try and lock on, try and get the shots out, he disappears. Great position for a Worcester on this map. Uh, if you've got a Minotaur friend with you around, it's horrible very difficult to dislodge from there so you kind of got to wait for them to get the move going <clears throat> uh, zoom has popped back up and the audacious popped back up as well it's at this point i've decided now because i'm a little bit out on my own so i haven't got a lot of aa cover around me that i need to move my boat back in move it in closer uh, that azuma out there on our flank is still causing us trouble I haven't switched back to him yet because I was hoping to get some more damage or try and get rid of this Worcester because he's causing us problems as well. Now, I know from the gunfire going on behind me and what Urban Slayer was saying that he was targeting the Azuma on the other side and the uh, North Carolina was also firing at him. So as I had a better angle, I was trying for the Worcester who just keeps jinking in and out of this island making this so, so difficult. But so far we've taken 135,000 damage, uh, 8 fires, and we've taken down a few planes and 79 shell hits. So uh, it's quite promising. Uh, we're going to see shortly as well though why the boat doesn't work well in close encounters. Because there are no DDs in this game. The flank to our, um, the other flank was being pushed as well, so we decided that we needed to, uh, we needed to get on with this. We needed to get this push done. We were both getting quite low on health. The Azuma's now been taken care of, so we're going to go and push Charlie together. Now what you're going to see next is the CV moving towards Urban Slayer, or the aircraft for the enemy CV moving towards Urban Slayer. Uh, his AA was on cooldown, so I get the hammer down, so I can get in closer to him and provide AA support for him as well at the same time. As take the Charlie cap, now he's got radar available to him, so's the Worcester. So as we expect, there's going to be the trade on the radar. And as we can see in chat there, Urban Slayer's radar has just gone on. We were hoping that maybe the Worcester had moved out. He hadn't. He was still in the same place. So we're going to go and try and flush him out now. We're both quite low health. But there's no torpedo risk at play here anyway. So it was worth our efforts to get into sea and get Charlie Cap taken. Because at the moment, we're not taking any points. 
and uh, they've been taking points for quite a while because they've got the cap on the other side of the map. So Charlie's going to become important. So this is where we've pushed in to the cap to try and get the points going, and we've done it after taking care of the other ships because we've lost quite a significant amount of our health playing around the sea line. We've dealt a fair amount of damage and helped deal with the ships there, but even at distance we got punished, and we got punished very hard at the start. So she is a HE spammer, player safe, player at distance, and then you'll get better results out of pushing in and getting yourself obliterated. And I've got a few other replays that show me doing that, because I tried the different game styles of pushing in and a few other games afterwards, and they didn't end well. They ended very quickly. She got penetrated from various different angles by various different ships and didn't last very long. Fortunately, this was the first game I played in her, and it was the only one worthy of actually looking at. So back onto where we are now, I see the Audacious rushing in, so I'm rushing, rushing, rushing to try and get into AA range. I've got my sector to the right, I've fired the AA to help Urban Slayer. The guns are coming in on him, the CV's dropped him, he's down to 500 health, so he's not going to last for much longer. Worcester there, he's keeping reasonably angled against these guns, they should be indiscriminate. Unfortunately, Urban Slayer's gone down. My health's pretty low here, I and mean, the CV's coming in on me as well. So I'm trying to swing the bow around. Now the Worcester's going to have IFHE for sure. That's going to go through the nose and we'll see what effect that has in a minute. But we're also going to see the effect of how heavy these guns are side on. At this point, this was worth going for. If we could get rid of this Worcester or cause him significant damage, then there's a good chance that we, the team can finish him off. And luckily, he shows just enough for me to get a couple of Citadels off of him and 22,000 damage but with with uh, Urban Slayer's corpse there and uh, the shots through the nose I myself have been destroyed but we're going to come back to that we'll look at the score sheets first so the game does end in victory so that's a bit of a spoiler of what's coming up and what we ended up with and we got a decent amount of base good amount of damage a large amount of fires and that was pretty much all done at range so as we can see there, myself and Urban Slayer managed to just take in just over 2,000 base XP each, so it wasn't a bad game all in. A detailed report will show the Montana there who took a significant amount of damage. Predominantly that's all in fire. And then finally we'll have a look at the uh, credits and XP. So she does have decent potential earning and what flags I was running on board to bring that in. And there we go, that puts us up to 424,000 uh, credits made on that one. So that's not too bad. Okay, so as promised, let's go back and watch the rest of the game from when I blew up. Because <laughs> it wouldn't be fair to otherwise, would it? Uh, so, as we saw just before we went bang, uh, we take a large amount of health off the Worcester. And the Worcester has had a fantastic game up to this point as well. And he hasn't really done much wrong. He's kept his team in it. He's come in to, to contest the cap, and he's taking care of the uh, the two cruisers that were coming to uh, put him down. But with the last blows I did to him, though, I mean, they were pretty fatal. And then at this point here, after he's finished raining some fire down, the CVs are going to finish him off. Which is no surprise with two in the game, even with that amount of AA available. And I would imagine he probably had a reasonable amount of AA left because he hadn't taken a huge amount of damage from me or much fire from anybody else at that point that you know even with this much AA available it's not enough to cope with two CVs but a great game from him to um, hold hold this side together for his team so uh, with him out the way I mean we're still not actually leading on the scoreboard yet but part and parcel of why we made that push was because we needed to take that cat we needed to flush that Worcester out and um the press had been stopped on the other side, so that did afford us the opportunity to make that happen and start scoring some points. The NC, of course, he'd already made his way over here into Alpha, so the opposition weren't scoring any points. With the loss of the last ship, of course, that's now created a swing in their favour. Uh, the Lion himself pushing across broadside to the North Carolina, but arguably as well, the North Carolina is also broadside to the Lion. He's going to get some decent volleys off. Uh, the audacious aircraft have dropped their torpedoes off in the direction of the line, so he's going to get taken care of as well quite shortly. So while we just sort of like flick around this game, uh, there you go, audacious down the line, what do we think of the Azuma? Yes, the question is though, is, do we need another HE spammer in the game? Because there's nothing 
I don't think there's anything particularly special about her. Unlike the Zhao or the Ibuki before, while she doesn't, the Ibuki at tier 9 doesn't have the same range, she does have torpedoes. And she also has access to hydroacoustic as well. And we don't here, so uh, that's one, one downside. But then, as I alluded to earlier, that's not an option you're really going to want to take on because if you're close enough to be torpedoed, you're probably close enough to be shot. And with such thin armour, you're going to get deleted very very quickly it's a ship that's probably going to suit a lot of players and i think a lot of them will probably struggle with it because of the nature of that kind of he gameplay and the discipline of keeping it but do we need another he spam cruiser maybe not but we've certainly got one and it's i th kind of get the feeling it's more to complement the fact that we've got the soviet one and we've also got the us as well and there we are. So what's next? Do we see a British heavy cruiser coming at some point to the game? It's certainly possible. I wouldn't put anything past it. Uh, she's not my favourite boat, to be honest. But, you know, it's got to be played. I had the XP knocking around. I already had the Alaska. So uh, I decided to get it. And um, yeah, I'll probably play her again more. I might find it's a style I enjoyed. But it just feels like the Zhao. I'm using the same captain from the Zhao. And uh, there she is. That's the Izuma. So um, if you've got the free XP out there and you really feel like trying something you have got a lot of free XP free then sure I will go ahead and buy the Alaska instead thanks for watching until we sync again bravado out